So we're going to be talking about derivative rules in this video. So I want to just kind of go over the ones we know. So we've got the power rule. The product rule. The quotient rule. And um, then we have the then we have some others that kind of just don't really fall in. So we've got sine, cosine. So derivatives of some specific functions like sine of x, cosine of x, e of x, ln of x, tangent of x, cotangent of x, secant of x, cosecant of x. So these are just kind of some specific function rules, and we'll get into those in a minute. But these are the rules, rules. So even though we have, we kind of know the reaction of these, where these are the rules. Okay. So um, we also have uh, constants, constant multiplier, sum and difference. Um, so let's just kind of get started with the power rule. Um, let's say I need to take the derivative of something with power on it. So let's say I had three. Now let's keep it really simple. Because you know the power rule. You do. So we're just going to make it x to the 10th. This is our function. And so when I take the derivative of both sides, by dy dx equals the derivative of this. This is important. So I haven't really talked about this part, but becomes 10x to the 9th times dx dx. And I know that part we have never written down. dy dx over here. What do you think this is? Well, you're right, it is one. So, which is why we never wrote it down before. But eventually, next chapter, it's not going to be one, and I'll explain what that means in a minute. So, there we are. No big deal. So, the rule then, I'm going to go ahead and use something a little strange for this rule co connection. I'm going to have y equals square raised to some power we'll call n. Okay? And so the derivative equals n square n minus 1 times d square dx. And this, n square meaning anything I want here. Some crazy thing raised to a power. So in other words, we're going to learn how to take the derivative of sine of x squared eventually. We can't do that right now. That's next chapter. So I don't want to get into it, but that we can use the power rule for this. Once we've and of course it would be written like this on our paper because we had that kind of a convention. But this is what's really happening and that's important. Right now we'd have to use pro, we'd have to rewrite that and use a product rule. But eventually we're going to not have to do that. So here we go. So there we've got the power rule. Now that I know the power rule, I'm going to talk to you about some other really kind of silly rules. So we've got the derivative of a constant. So let's say I wanted to take the derivative of 5. And the answer is 0. And let's explain why. If I was to graph y equals 5, I would get a constant line that looked like this. And what is the slope of this line? Well, it is 0. And so that's why that happens. So it's pretty obvious, but anyway, it's a rule. Derivative of a constant is zero. You can kind of apply the power rule, it gets a little bit funky there, but you know. Then we have the constant multiplier. So let's say we have c times some function. Okay. And I want to take the derivative of it. Well, then I can actually do this, c times the derivative of the function, or in other words, c times f prime. And well, this may not seem very important right now, because it's just like, well, I just multiply, don't I? And what, why are you talking about this? Well, when I'm using a power rule, I multiply, but I, there's other rules, and so we need to kind of keep that in mind. Okay, so this is Constant multiplier is what this one's called. 
And this rule is more important later when we get into the opposite of derivatives. So I'll get into that a little later. All right, so we've done, and so now we need to do product, do product sum. So the derivative of some mess, let's call it a of x plus or minus b of x, and we'll just leave it there, is the derivative of each piece added and subtracted together. So it's a prime of x, wow, that's just awful, a prime of x plus or minus b prime of x. In other words, if I wanted to take the derivative of 3x to the fourth power minus 5x cubed plus 8x as a whole group, I can just take the derivative of each piece. So 3 to be 12x cubed minus 15x squared plus 8. And we already know this. It's like, well, duh. Well, yeah, duh. Isn't it kind of nice that some things are really simple, especially in this world of unsimple? Okay, next we have the product and quotient rules. But before we get into those, which are the two of the hardest rules we've learned so far, quotient being the harder of the two, um, it, we need to talk about the functions. So we have the derivative of sine of x is equal to cosine x. Okay. The derivative of cosine of x is equal to the opposite of sine x. Okay. Derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x. Beautiful one. Easiest one to remember. The derivative of natural log of x is equal to 1 over x when x is greater than 0. Not equal to, remember we can't take the natural log of 0, and all the results of doing natural log, all the, and we can't take the natural log of a negative number, which is why x has to be greater than 0. Okay, so those are the ones we know. We have just learned these. Wait, let's start with tangent. The derivative of tangent of x, the derivative of cotangent of x, the derivative of secant x, and the derivative of cosecant x. Now these are, we derive these using the quotient rule. So if you forget these, the quotient rule will save you, okay? But in case, this one is secant squared x. This one is cosecant squared x. This one is tangent x secant of x. And this one is negative, excuse me, that one's negative too. Cotangent x cosecant x. And again, if you forget these, which is likely, and there's a pattern, and we're going to talk about all that we did again. We'll talk, keep talking about it. Um, and if you kind of put it with the cos, the derivatives of the cos are negative, including this one. See the derivative of anything with a co in front of it when we say it out loud? Those are all negative. The derivatives of the regulars are positive. Notice the relationship between the functions. Opposites, right? Tangent and cotangent are related to these as opposites. Then with secant, we get secant in there and we keep it. And so it's kind of, there's kind of a flow to it. it took me years. Don't feel bad. I, I used to just derive them. It was just easier. All right. So those are our rules of our functions that we know so far. And then we have the joyful product rule. And I love the product rule. The product rule is beautiful because since products are commutative, this rule is fully commutative, which is wonderful, meaning that order can basically be tossed out. So if you get the order wrong, it's not the end of the world. This, is this product rule is designed for doing things like x squared times sine x. Okay, it was designed for those. 
but we're not going to use that. We're going to go ahead and use something we can check with another rule. Well, because we can't check sine x, sine x squared times sine x. So let's do something we can check. So um, x squared times 3x plus 5. Just a really boring, this is our equation. So the product rule says, take the first term times the first function, times it by the derivative of the second. Add to that the second function times the derivative of the first function. And that's it. We clean it up. And we get 9x squared plus 10x. So there's our derivative. And I only cleaned it up for one reason. Officially, now that you're in calculus, we are unconcerned with your ability to simplify things. So if this is a free response test question, and I asked you this, which I probably wouldn't, but if I did, you're finished right here. Please stop working. If it's a multiple choice question, you were looking for an answer and you need to keep going. Okay, if it's on a circuit, circuits are a multiple choice practice right now. We're taking them, we're simplifying all the way. So we need to keep going. All right, I did this one so I could check it with the other rules I know. So I can distribute and I get 3x squared cubed. plus 5x squared, and when I take the derivative, I get 9x squared plus 10x, the same answer, and honestly, this one easier to distribute, but again, the product rule was not designed for this problem. It's not one we could distribute. Why would we need a product rule? If we could always just simplify first, we don't need a product rule. That's ridiculous. Well, then we introduced equations like this. And now I need a product rule. I can't distribute sine of x squared to sine. It doesn't make any sense. So if this is my function, then I need a product rule. So f prime of x equals the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the second function times the derivative of the first function Clean it up a little, x squared times cosine x plus 2x sine x. The only reason I would clean this up is when this is sitting at the back, it's confusing what I'm taking the sign of. So I'm going to put it in front so that I don't think, oh, I should make that 2x squared or something. So I move it into the front. This is my answer. I'm done. This is what the product rule was designed for. It was not designed for problems where you could distribute. It just wasn't. It helps. Sometimes it's really so much more helpful to use a product rule, especially since I'll let you stop wherever you, whenever you're done doing calculus. Once you start doing algebra, you're going too far, unless you're trying to find a multiple choice answer or answer on the circuit. Okay. So then we have the joyous and beautiful and amazing quotient rule. And this is my favorite and least favorite of the basic rules that we're going to be learning in this chapter. I love it, and I despise it at the same time. So let's say I have a function y equals x cubed minus 8x plus 5. And again, I'm going to make one that I can check by using the power rule all over x. And when I can check it using the power rule, that means the power rule it, that we're wasting our time using the quotient rule. That's neither here nor there. We're going to do it anyway. The derivative, we down the function on the bottom, d up 3x squared minus 8 plus 0, minus up, and order is vital, times the derivative of down, all over down squared. Again, I am finished right now. I don't have to do any more work. I have taken the derivative and I'm finished. But if it's, pro if it's on a circuit and I need to keep going to find the right answer, I need to keep going. In this problem, we're going to keep going so we can check it using another method. So distributing on the top, I get 3x cubed minus 8x. And I'm going to distribute this negative, these two together. So I'm kind of doing this math, but I don't like to rewrite it because it wastes my time. 
But if this was something more complicated back here, I'd want to rewrite it. I mean, I'd want to, you know, but I don't want to rewrite it, but I'm distributing them both together. So I get negative x cubed plus 8x minus 5 all over x squared. Okay, keeping going. And again, I'm going so I can compare, not because I need to do anything else, but just so I can compare. Combining like terms, I have 2x cubed, 0 x's, see that, 0, minus 5 over x squared, which is equal to 2x cubed over x squared minus 5 over x squared, which is equal to 2x minus 5 over x squared. I'm going to leave it like that, or I could write it 2x minus 5x to the negative 2. Probably not this, but it'll make it, might make it easier to compare. So this is where I'd stop. That's what would be on a certain multiple choice. This may be useful. Okay, so there we are. Now, if you're wondering how I can do this step, think about adding fractions together. When we add fractions together, we have this fraction, this fraction, this fraction. They all have to have the same denominator to add them together. So that means if the denominator is a sink, it doesn't matter what the denominator is, but we can take each plus or minus piece of the numerator and put it over the denominator separately. So we can think of this as, oh, this used to be this problem that I combined, you know, my numbers in the top got added, my denominator just stayed one thing. It doesn't matter what the denominator is. It's really only helpful though, when the denominator is a single term. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and go back to the top of our page and try this another way. So this green right here, I don't need it. That was just me showing you what I was doing with my distribution. All right, let's rewrite this. And we're going to rewrite it the way we finished out the last problem. So we're going to rewrite it by breaking it up. x cubed over x minus 8 over x, 8x over x plus 5 over x, which becomes uh, give me a rectangle. All right, this becomes x squared minus 8 plus 5x to the negative 1 using my power rule 2x squared to the first 0 minus 5x to the negative 2 Amazon dismiss and so and I said that our one answer might be helpful for checking this is right here the screen is y prime and again, that wouldn't be the answer to the multiple choice test. That would be. Okay. But if we scroll down, see, same answer. And again, power rule was divide, simplifying at first was easier than going into the quotient rule. But again, the quotient rule was not designed for things that could be simplified first. It was designed for complicated problems, like even simply complicated problems like the following. Y equals x cubed minus 8 over x squared plus x minus 7. To, we, to do simplify this, we have to do long division, which we don't want to do. It'll work, but we don't want to do it. I can just use the product quotient rule. Down. D up. Minus up. D down. Make sure everything's in parentheses. All over down squared. Much easier than simplifying first. And if this is not on a circuit or a multiple choice question or any of those things,
like at the edge of where it wants to see this. I don't like to see it over there. I don't know why. Weird. Okay, anyway. Um, so. And I'm finished. Okay, it's what I'm trying to say is this is done. I don't have anything else to do. So that's the quotient rule. Let's try it again. This one you're trying your own. So let's say I have y equals sine x over ln x. So go ahead, take the derivative. Remember down d up, minus up d down, all over down squared. Go ahead and pause the movie right now, video right now, take the derivative. All right, so here I am. I have down, d up, minus up, d down, or down squared. If this is a, if this is on the test, you're finished. All done. Don't keep working. You're finished. Stop. 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 I know it feels awkward and strange not to finish. But look, this is what happens when you finish. I don't think you want to. I mean, let's be let's be quite frank. I decided to help myself kind of see it. I broke it up as two fractions for a minute. This one over x ended up in the denominator. In case you're under, wondering where this x came from, it came from this, right? It's in the denominator. And then to get a little, like terms, I had to multiply this one by x over x, which I didn't write down. And so then I had x times this minus the sine of x all over. And so there's a simplified version. I don't, I don't know if that it was worth it. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. And if you get here and then can look at multiple choice answers and maybe go, okay, which one is the closest to what I have? You might be set. Um, and be careful. Be really, really careful. Like even when I was rewriting it, like, oh, I can cancel on natural log. I'm like, no, no, I'm trying to get them to one fraction. Don't do that. It'll make it harder. So there we have it. Those are the rules we know so far. Have fun. Calculus is fun. All right. We'll talk some more. See you guys later.